Hello everyone and welcome back once again to the 16th Marketing Conclave. Thank you for joining us back. Before we move ahead, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our Powered by Partner Z5 and Gold Partners Infobip, Brandwagon, Flipkart and Jagran New Media. Without any further delay, let's begin the panel discussion on video marketing now and beyond COVID. Here with us are our esteemed speakers, Mr. Vivek Bhargava, CEO, Dan Performance Group, Densu AG's Network, and Chair, Digital Advertising Committee, IAMAI. Mr. Tarun Kachiyal, CEO, Z5. Mr. Harish Narayanan, CMO, Mintra. Mr. Shonil Charles, EVP, Times Network. And Mr. Tanmay Mohanty, CEO of Zenith India and Head of Global Partnerships of Publicis Media India. Over to you, Mr. Bhargava. Great. Thank you, Manu. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to request all the panelists to give their two minute view on the topic, because I think this is a very exciting topic and video advertising is, I think, taken over the world by storm. And I think the digital marketing has the, an opportunity to become mass media on back of video advertising. So we start with Tarun. Tarun would love to have your two minutes view on, on the topic itself. Okay. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, I think uh, you know it's a great opportunity to be talking about video advertising at the time that video, uh, digital video, has seen such a surge uh, during the COVID period. A lot of people tell me that is this limited to COVID? Is this limited uh, to the period of not having content on television and so on and so forth and and things like that? Let me <clears throat> divide this in two or three parts. Right. One is access. Um, for a long while, uh, we all know that the smartphone penetration in this country has been on the rise. The internet penetration of the country has been on the rise. And the largest usage of data in the country uh, on all of this internet penetration has been on video. But was this the primary form of, of video consumption in the country? Uh, really, no. Television has always been the primary form of video consumption for Indians. Uh, even though we've seen across the globe, cord cutting has had become real and people had moved uh, to consuming a lot of video on uh, on connected devices and smart TVs. India which still was a catch up TV phenomena on mobile and uh, linear TV consumption on television. So what did COVID do? Uh, COVID did three or four things. One, uh, much like all of us, for a large amount of Indians, right? Uh, having to work from home and getting good digital infrastructure, getting good Wi-Fi connectivity at home became imperative and became a utility. Uh, that did two or three things, right? Uh, making Wi-Fi the utility in the country or in, in homes in the country brings about your ability to connect most of your devices, but most importantly, connecting your smart TVs with the Wi-Fi that you have at home and being able to consume video on demand. Now, it's very simple uh, on the face of it. But for the last two or three years, most televisions that have gotten sold in the country have been smart. But unfortunately, most users don't use those TVs as smart TVs. They use them for linear television. They understand that there are apps on those TVs. Some of them have migrated to downloading apps and watching some of that video on demand. But most of them had left their TV to be uh, as is. Two things happened. One, you got broadband at home. Second, your linear TV just stopped coming because there was no production, new production on linear TV. And so you didn't really have any content to watch. And third, uh, you know, you realize uh, that subscription video on demand uh, was a good thing to have and was really cheaply available in the market, whether you were to do it direct or whether you were to do it bundled through telcos, through boxes, and so on and so forth. A combination and a triangulated you know, approach to some of this, right? which is telcos offering you bundles on subscription and video on demand, you having broadband at home, and you having a smart TV at home, has catapulted people watching video on demand on TVs hugely. And I think video advertising and video marketing will never be the same post-COVID in this country. People are not realizing, and we see first first-hand data of the level of consumption, Vivek, 
that is now happening on TVs for video on demand. And we spent the last 18 months, whether you call it luck, whether you call it foresight, whether you call it intelligence, in building apps for TVs, right? And we built apps for all sorts of TVs. For TV that was at 7,000 rupees, 9,000 rupees price point, price point, to a TV that was at a lakh plus price point. And we realized that we needed to have distributed ourselves across the board. And we worked with platforms like Samsung, LG, View, Viewed, and all of that in even going backward in making our apps compatible. And that's really key, right? Because in sure. India, people don't change TV so quickly. Sure. So I think, uh, you know, I'll, I'll share one story out here which actually elaborates your point in this movie. My father had a collection of some 50, 100 CDs. And I bought this creative jukebox and transferred all his CDs into the jukebox. But he refused to use it because he says, I want to use my CDs. We were traveling once and the box that carried the CDs, which he was supposed to travel with, got left behind. And then that's the only time because he wanted to listen to music, he'd learned how to use the jukebox and then he never touched his CDs again. So when the Gen Z today is watching content on TV, right, and they realize how powerful it is, in a way that broadcast and sort of the cutting the cord has happened so long ago in my house, I don't even remember. In fact, something had happened and internet was not working, wanted to watch something in sports a year ago. Then we realized that we had not paid Tata Sky for one year or so. That's what happened. <laughs> so very interesting. Uh, next, uh, Harish would love to have your views on the topic. Sure. So first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, and great to be here. Great to see everyone else on the panel. Uh, so interestingly, uh, couldn't agree more with everything that was uh, said by Tarun just before me. Uh, before the, uh, the stint at Mintra, I actually spent six years in YouTube. So this is all uh, stuff that we used to and preach to uh, you know the brands outside. And now I'm on the other side. Uh, the way I look at uh, marketing is, you know. This, this is an increase of uh, bandwidth across the board, right? So there was a time when uh, newspaper ads were the in thing, right? Then radio was the in thing. And then when the bandwidth increased, television was the in thing. Now the bandwidth has increased to the supercomputers in a pocket, which means that uh, you know, uh, smartphone advertising or uh, uh, like uh, Tarun said, uh, digital video on TV, that would be the in thing. So that is one bandwidth. Second bandwidth I'll talk about is uh, the type of content itself. So when when the supply and interest in the content increases, the, the, the interest of consuming video content has, has uh, shot through the roof. So there are panels where I participated with uh, the marketing head of uh, MX Player. Uh, I spoke to my friends at YouTube. Uh, I speak to my friends at Netflix. They are all saying the same thing, right? Like we are hearing from Tarun uh, Akhil that uh, the demand for this company, and in a way, I, I feel that this is the golden age of uh, video content. Uh, in that production, uh, stars, uh, uh, the talent, uh, everybody is very happy because the, the stories that they're waiting to be told uh, are being told in film. So for me, this is the golden age of video and the golden age of video marketing and advertising also. And the way it, uh, it, it uh, plays out for Mintra for us is uh, we look at video very holistically. It is a central part of uh, what Mintra does in its market. So it's not just about uh, uh, ads, right? So the way we look at video marketing is there is obviously ads. So our uh, 45 second or 15 second or 30 second films that we make. But more than that, uh, we are one of the uh, biggest uh, fashion content producers in the country. So we have our own IP called Mintra Fashion Superstar, which uh, season two is about to launch uh, in a month or so. We have an in-house platform called Mintra Studio, which is predominantly video. Uh, it's like a mini Instagram on the app itself to consume fashion content. Uh, our uh, uh, social channels on video on both YouTube and Instagram are thriving, right? Uh, they are, uh, uh, people look to us for advice and inspiration. We use video marketing in uh, doing master classes for our Mintra Insiders, which is a loyalty program, uh, where uh, the best stylists across the country actually come and teach uh, how to uh, style, you know, depending on your body type, depending on your choice, your uh, color, uh, um, what you like. So video is not just 
uh, advertising budget because you know, it's a holistic marketing medium for us. Where we go from content to social to engagement to even loyalty. <clears throat> and all the conversations are happening predominantly via the video uh, medium. So that's how we look at it. Um, for us, also, uh, the, the creativity and the storytelling aspect is very important. And video helps us to get uh, a big push on that and gives us much richer uh, storytelling context uh, platform to tell and fashion inherently is a very visual medium. It's a very creative medium where uh, to, to explain versus to show your video. And the last one I would mention is even on our product, um, most people don't know this. We are one of the biggest video catalogs in the country, if not, uh, you know, maybe in the world also, of fashion uh, video. So even our catalog images, the model standing with a certain apparel on them, uh, we have videos then. Uh, so it's at the heart of marketing of uh, fashion. So very interesting. I think uh, two things I would like to just add to this. I think when you were I was listening to you about bandwidth, so I can almost imagine a few years down the line, all of us will be sitting and discussing uh, how AR and VR is the future of marketing. Because <laughs> as bandwidth increases, the next phase is going to be probably AR and VR in exactly the same way. And I think I think you drove home a very interesting point that a lot of brands will have to become publishers where brand advertising will happen through consumption of content rather than through interruption of content. So I think that's the two big changes I think we're going to see in the world as we move forward. Uh, so Tanmay, your two minutes start now. <laughs> yeah, quite a lot what Tarun, you and Harish were talking about. But uh, you know, last uh, almost 18 years now in digital, the two things that actually I saw change. One is 15, 16 when Geo launched and online video, so-called online video became that large number where you could think of people streaming videos and COVID. It, but what did COVID bring in, and I, I think I agree with that on uh, Tarun, is that large, finally large screen became bigger part of video consumption, not just mobile. A lot of clients over the years were, uh, how do I tell a story in a small screen? That changed large discussion now happening how do you make a story in 60 seconds and put it on a uh, tv not on a vertical video just yes vertical video and all of that definitely has a say and it's pretty evident how that story is getting played among platform owners but the large screen storytelling still coming back that is how i see the first change happening the second thing that I think is pretty important, and people talk about how commerce also became pretty important during this period for India. But if you really see, non discretionary spends actually in India still has not been that down. And what it did after food and some essential services, entertainment is the only thing Indians can go back to, and they paid for online video. So that broke the numbers that we are looking at. Uh, do we see it coming back uh, down? No, probably not because data shows that post geo, for example, people really didn't switch up from online and mobile video. They still stream the video and the number stayed up. Once you consume something in a bigger screen, you can go back. And the last thing I think that's more uh, going to be that the content distribution became more democratized. That means People when ready to pay for certain content when they want exclusive content like Netflix or Amazon. Same time, people also looked at free content providers uh, who could probably keep enough content for the children because they are at home. So that's the growth that you are looking at from a consumption point of view. I think my point is that I think once you change a habit, you can't go back. And yeah. now clients are waking up how to tell that story. So that makes completely sense of how the market will grow. So I think, Tane, I completely agree with you. You know, all the time we talked about this two Indias, right? But I think it's not two Indias, it's probably 20 Indias. You know, in the 80s, Intel, which is Windows and Intel put together, own 110% of the industry profits. Yes. So there are individuals in India who would be far superior and wealthier than developed countries and their consumption habits will be very different. You know, Reliance Geo gave me free internet access for a period of time because I live in a building called Chaitanya, but now I've got a 1GB connection. 
So I'm investing a lot of money is because my whole family has got used to content at really fast speeds and watching 4K TV on a large screen and we can never go back. Yes. So I think this is what's going to be that there is going to be this users, the users who give you 20% of the users who give you 200% of their profits. And I think basically that's how video marketing will have to be done that how do we end up reaching to those users and influencing them. So awesome. Uh, yeah. Shonil, your so, views. Um, Vivek, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, second a lot of stuff, you know, already spoken first. Thank you, you know, to, for having me here. And uh, uh, coming from a traditional television network, you know, video is in, inside our DNA. We're primarily a news network. And a couple of my observations, which we've seen in the past couple of months, is that we also publish text, right? So we have a benchmark on text and video. Both have gone up. News consumption overall has gone up, but video has gone up by fivefold. If text has doubled, so it's clearly a surge towards video. And I think a lot of us have more time as well. You know, I talked to a lot of my friends. You know, this commute to work not happening is letting them watch TV. You know, watch Netflix till two a.m., get up at nine o'clock, and be in office by nine five. You know, the office is right there. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, you know, time waste. So I think people are putting in, I believe, in, personally, I'm doing this myself, a lot more video consumption, the whole household. You know, if you have a couple of kids, everyone's glued to their screens. And if you want to call a quick family meeting, you just have to pull off, put off the router and everybody comes to check kya ho gaya, what's happened, why has the internet gone off? And, you know, you can quickly meet everyone, uh, you know, without having to chase them around the house. But, uh, uh, you know, interestingly, uh, you know, for us uh, at uh, at times, uh, we've been doing video for a long time. Uh, and one of my core jobs, you know, across the last 10 years has been to try and take television networks onto digital. But we've never seen a time like this. And uh, finally, the big networks are also introspecting. Earlier, the thought logic was, you know, whatever runs on TV, that's a video asset, put it online. And, you know, it's video as video, but it's completely a different ballgame. The treatment of the content assets, the way it's made, uh, the screen it's formatted for, or the platform which you're running on, all those things have become very important for all of us to understand. And like Tarun said, it's crucial to have content everywhere. So just about everybody is trying to figure out this smart TV ecosystem, uh, you know, all YouTube, Facebook, and a dozen other places where, you know, you can see your content. And I guess, uh, you know, as this panel moves forward, we will talk about, you know, how we are envisioning monetization and, you know, how marketing will evolve as this content seeds all over the place. So a couple of thoughts of mine, you know, it was good to hear Harsh talking about uh, content and how important it is to them at Mintra. We are a big partner. We, we incubated our own studio called Zoom Studio. Uh, and this is a digital first, you know, uh, thing doesn't, doesn't provide anything for the Zoom television channel, but works very closely with partners like Harsh and Mintra, et cetera, to do very high quality branded content and meet uh, client aspirations. So a couple of things from my two minutes, I'll loop back as this pro you know conversation progresses. But great to be here. So, so I think Shoni, I think one of the things I would like to share that I was part of a TV show with you guys itself. Okay. And I think that's the time I understood how TV content is produced, right? Because we were producing a half an hour episode and it took us six hours to produce it. Oh, it was yeah. exhausting as hell, right? And I was wondering, I said, like, now I understand why does it cost so much to produce <laughs> one episode, right? And digital guys like me don't understand where that comes from. But I think so you know what, we, now it's smarter. Now yeah. the TV guys are a bit smarter. Absolutely. But I think one of the things that I've at least I would I would think the way I look at video advertising is that earlier to make a medium mass media. It requires reach and it requires an impact of an ad unit. But digital, unfortunately, it never had for the longest period of time. Video has done is has brought in that ad unit. And especially when you look at a phone, which is a large screen phone in front of your eyes, is equivalent to a 32 inch TV, which was from this distance parity point of view. And I think the way I'm looking at is Gen Z has forgotten that what is TV, what is broadcast content, what is, you know, uh, streaming content, right? Because they don't even understand it. They don't care. Right. And I've also realized that I think we'll have to produce content with different ways. So let's say I'm writing a book because I got old fashioned guy, but now what I've done is I've interviewed nine people on video using zoom and I'm going to put that onto a website as a platform of the book, right? The book is called happiness is a muscle, but it's on happiness, right? Nothing about digital advertising, but the fact of the matter is I realized that Gen Z, I want to read the book. They're going to consume content. 
So it's almost like we as brands will have to produce content, which almost takes care of 15, 20, 30 different audiences across the board if you want to communicate and influence them. Right? Yes. Yeah. So I think what I do is that uh, I start my questions with you only, Shonil. So I think what we discussed was that how are the changes that you're making in your org chart? Because now you have this team who has produced half an hour of content spending six hours and hours okay. like one and a half hours goes in makeup. Makeup, I know. Why do you, how do you actually shift this? He says, okay, now there is this 50 lakh episode which needs to be made in one lakh rupees or 50,000 rupees. How do you actually change your organization to make that happen? So, you know, I think, uh, Wait, uh, so my what I have seen in the last two three years is this uh, you know the entire organization has to you know do an overhaul and you know right top down you know so uh, uh, that's when the vision translates to the uh, traditional television network moving in the direction of digital and many teams have to then start rethinking and there's a lot of legacy and it's not easy and you know people are used to someone and someone walking in and doing their makeup even before they do a news broadcast etc you know to stop that. Uh, I think so we are somewhere in the middle, but it's hap the changes are happening very, very rapidly away. And another very interesting, uh, you know, to tie into something I said earlier that earlier you would make content for TV and then that would be your asset, which you would put everywhere and, you know, try to make that, uh, put it on digital platforms. That's completely changing. And one of our early moves have been again in zoom and Bollywood. And since we are in news, uh, a lot of news becomes very dated. Yeah. If you wait till 9 PM to show it in your main broadcast and and earlier, the thought was that okay, digital will follow TV. We, can, we won't break on digital because TV is our mainstay. Now, a lot of that is changing. So for Zoom, for instance, you know, Bollywood feeds us with a continuous supply of content. It's almost, you know, like actions happening every minute. We don't wait for a 9 p.m. or a 8 p.m. We put it online and we are seeing fantastic results from that, you know, and, and this it cross pollinates as well. You know, you can use your online assets to push the TV show. But in summary, I just want to say that the entire org is going through a metamorphosis driven by digital consumption. Uh, another big learning is from what you rightly said that, you know, if we continue to do content the way we've been trained to and what where we are conditioned to, we just might just miss out on Gen Z. He's never going to put on, you know, uh, a channel and watch it. It has to show up somewhere in his content consumption journey. And now there's a huge attempt to reformat content and making sure that we are everywhere where everyone is you know like tarun said we have to be it's content everywhere now so that's a couple of thoughts of mine hey, i think we'll have to even rename our organizations rather than a tv or a broadcast company but a content company it starts yeah. almost there right <clears throat> so next uh, uh arish would love to know your views on sort of the marketing mix what in fashion marketing what does video uh, what are the things that video plays and how do you see it changing post COVID? Uh, what are the changes you're going to see in pre and post? Sure. So I think uh, it has only gotten more important. Uh, it always was a central part of our storytelling. Uh, given the increased consumption across digital channels, uh, it is becoming an even bigger part of our uh, media mix. Right? So uh, as I mentioned, the, the content IPs we are creating have become more important. So we are putting more marketing messages behind those. Uh, from a uh, media buy point of view, uh, platforms, uh, OTT's platforms uh, have, have started with more important as well. Um, the uh, cross-media uh, model is becoming really good. Right? So, if I spend something on TV versus YouTube versus Facebook versus Hotstar versus you know, other platforms, what is the mix and how do they uh, that is becoming more important. Uh, production has become very different. So we used to have big production budgets, uh, big crews, a lot of time, uh, stars, uh, celebs, you know, uh, dates were more flexible. COVID has brought in a very different uh, sense to uh, for our June fail, we actually shot in celebrity homes. So we literally sent a crew to Rithik uh, Roshan a film. So it was very interesting as an experiment, and uh, it will only continue to become more uh, interesting as the time goes. But what I'm uh, uh, 
uh, video as an important part of our media mix uh, will not change. It is only becoming more important. The way we deliver, create, and consume media uh, will will keep changing. And the good part is we are a digital first company, so for us this is normal. So changing things every uh, couple of months, uh, you know, revamping into a video, uh, relooking technologies on uh, the stack, uh, the marketing stack. This is how we normally operate. So this is. Uh, yeah. So I think two industries, online fashion and digital, are the sort of industry that are getting the tailwind of COVID for say to a certain nation. Fortunately, that's the way life is. So Tanmay, I think uh, we have a question which is dividing marketing and and sort of performance in video advertising. So in this video neutral planning world, would love to have your thoughts of how uh, brands are planning their advertising. <laughs> And that's a pretty <laughs> difficult question, but I will try to see that uh, is the, the two diverse type of clients we all come across. We like you have come across, I have come across at least one who looks at performance as the core of everything they spend and how that. Is. The second is people who look at brand and how that is. There are two different divergent thought on marketing that is has been taken around. But what COVID has done, and this is where the uh, story changes, is that most of the time, what we didn't see coming was the whole cookie-less world in the middle of this COVID pandemic. Okay. And specifically from India point of view, not having a single panel has not helped in this world. Because most of the time, client dependent on third-party data to do their multimedia planning. What has changed now, that is so most clients, global or local, have woken up to, and Varun is here, he has done the same, woken up to collecting first party data and plan on basis of that. Because what market has started seeing, and that is pretty important, is that COVID has brought in or reduced the loyalty brands have seen. Agree? So in on top of the funnel, we're in, in up, end of the day going to spend a lot of money to be on the top of the mind. It doesn't work. At the same time, we drive performance. Most clients right now in a phase where they think of how do I look at this as a panel level? How do I look at multiplying the data? So if you stay in one of the panel, whether Google, Facebook, you can do very well in that network because the data sits up with them. But when you talk about a lot of video platforms coming up and you're not able to plan for that with, with along with TV, it becomes an issue. Look at Indonesia, for example. Indonesia, all the second party video platform, uh, platform owners came together to create a syndicate to stand up to the other platforms. And that's exactly what is India is going to move into because otherwise the marketing is going to stay between either platforms or large format TV campaigns and clients are not able to plan. No, awesome. Uh, uh, so I think one of the last questions I would ask, and then we can open it to the audience. So Tarun, I think you've been involved in this awesome storytelling, right? So uh, that's what we were discussing that video advertising is just storytelling. So would love to have your views and some thoughts on which are the best stories you've been involved with. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, some very interesting conversations, I, and I was quite amazed with the amount of video content that Harish and team make. Uh, where kudos to you on that, Harish. Uh, I think it almost fe feels like you do more content than we guys do as OTT platforms. Uh, but, um, and we'd like to partner you with some of that, so I'll talk to you about that later. But I think, uh, you know, Harish, uh, that in all of this, right, the core of all of this is going to be good stuff. Um, we can have better fast power data and and Tanmay was talking about it and and I agree with him. We've made all our registration mandatory and so you have to give us age and gender minimum if you've got to start watching our, our content on our platform. It's very different from what most OTT platforms have done in the world. And even YouTube allows you to watch without logging in, but you know, it was a big step that we had to take. It can restrict your scale, up, but it gives you better quality users users that you have more information about and so on and so forth. We tied up with a company that does sensors, uh, which allows us to understand, you know, users by that long and and be able to make their profiles even richer than what we know. But when you come down to finally delivering that content, it is about good storytelling. 
And what we realized in this post-COVID area is that I think there are three or four things that are coming out very clearly. And I don't know whether they last forever, but I think they will last for some time to come. Uh, that are key to consumers. And what this is what I call the three R's. Uh, I think people have become too real about life, about aspirations, about what they need in life. Uh, so real is, is a word that we are living with. And, and that was much like the conversation that we were all having uh, before we started this panel, right? That oh, we are all living in a real world. We've actually kind of forgotten all the paraphernalia that we needed uh, to live our life, right? The second is uh, relevant, right? And I think that it's become, you know, we all were used to do very aspirational advertising. We would do stuff that was, uh, you know, uh, led us to be upwardly mobile and so on and so forth. But I think it, conversations have to be very relevant to the times we are living in now, right? And we're all living in very different and trying times that we've ever lived in. And the third is resonant, right? It must resonate with my situation, with my mindset, and what with what I'm going through. With limited social interactions, with limited social access, it is important for you to have messages that resonate with, with your users. So I think purposeful content that is real, relevant, and resonant is very, very important. And you know, we, we made a lot of content over before the pandemic, and then we started uh, to release it. And then we started to acquire stuff that was lying on the table. And the lens that we put in was this real, relevant, resonant, uh, very um, purposeful content and it changed our game and we did like three or four or five big films which were very small in 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 uh, expense but very big in message and they have resonated so well that we realized that there was a you know there was a whole market out there that we had forgotten that existed or has gotten created over the last six, five to six months that wants to consume content that tugs the heart, right? And uh, and we did a film like Chintu Ka Birthday. We did another film called Pariksha, which was about education. We did another film called Miraksam, which was about a child wanting to learn how to dance. We did many. We're now doing another one called Atkan Chatkan, which is done by Rehman for uh, you know, for a child who becomes a musician out of a slum. All of these stories, they have, you know, they have delivered far more than any of the block on our platform for months and years and it is because i think we have all become far more real about the lives we live in today so i think i think that angle of consumer insight and storytelling is very key in video so i think one of the questions that have come up from the audience is uh, how does video marketing differ between metro and non-metro audiences uh, any of the panelists can take it away. I mean, I can give you uh, some uh, examples because we just see this data very regularly, right? Uh, I think those lines have blurred far more. I think everybody is going through the same situation today, right? Uh, the the living in the limited, the living within, the living, uh, you know, with whatever you you have and whatever you can afford is is real about everybody. Now they're at two levels, right? One is at the format level. So storytelling is kind of becoming more common across uh, the metros and the non-metros, but devices are still very different. What we've seen is that uh, devices like iOS, which are entry-level devices at the Geo feature phone, uh, devices like the entry-level mobile, uh, have done very, very well over this period, right? Uh, we had a, we built an HTML5 app uh, for the geo feature phone and we didn't think it had it was going to have scale but i think whether it is uh, you know the reverse migration that has happened or whether it, it is you know down trading of some angle but there has been a huge surge of people consuming across some of these smaller formats and smartphones yeah. and it has kind of changed the way we looked at some of this uh, for for a very long period of time so i think one just a question I would like to ask is that I think the duration of videos as a means of communication, I think can range from six seconds where a lot of brands and a lot of publishers, especially the social platforms feel is adequate time to communicate a story to, I did an interview with Rajesh Jain, where the interview was one hour, 42 minutes <laughs> because he, he let me speak. 
So how do you actually create these stories and what is generally a good file of videos? I think maybe Harish can answer this or Shunil, like in terms of the fashion videos you do, what is the range when somebody is just doing a dress? Is it like a five second video, which is that's about it? Or what kind of range of content have you built in different from a time format point of view? So, so my decide the duration. So if it is about a quick sale message, it will be 10 seconds. Uh, if it is about a time story, it can be 50, 60 seconds. If it is a, a fashion superstar episode, then it will be 20, 30 minutes. Uh, we have done uh, master classes, which is 10 minutes. So it depends on the thought. And given the, the flexibility we have on digital, um, if the content is good, the users are ready to watch. So depending on the content, we let it uh, take its own time. Right? Yeah. And the, the idea is to keep it crisp enough to sustain interest. So our BTS view through its benchmarks we have are quite uh, high and, and uh, we expect a lot from uh, so some are about hardworking and getting a quick message and a quick response. Some of them are more emotional uh, you know, response to the And uh, some others are about uh, longer format storytelling. So it depends on the, what the story wants to see and we decide. Yeah. Vivek, uh, uh, Harish, you're right. Vivek, from my perspective, you know, being a content creating engine, this is one thing which has complicated our lives a lot because you know earlier we had one television screen and you know our studio set used to fit into that perfectly and you know we could uh, plan all our content in one format now now since we're publishing in a dozen places and even in the case of branded content where the clients want say one or two platforms and not anymore so we for us it's become a lot more heavy lifting you know we have to uh, treat a content uh, especially video differently for each platform face facebook audiences and the platform behaves differently youtube youtube behaves differently tiktok is a brand new animal and then we have to cater to the audiences who are already you know watching us on tv uh, you know from you know our existing audience base so I, my I, my only point here is that this is one piece which we are all struggling with and uh, is become made uh, you know like quite complicated for our uh, our production units i was just asking how much time is left because you know, when you're sitting in a hall, you have all these people yeah, who come with time codes, time getting over, time getting over, and suddenly I realize that everybody's left for lunch and we we continue talking for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's also okay. So I think we have a couple of minutes left. I think uh, if we can uh, sort of spend maybe 30 seconds each in giving our final views, uh, how do you think what are the future of video advertising? How is going to evolve and some of the changes we've seen in terms of consumption in terms of demographics how it's gone to if, if in this parts of india is it a reversible trend which will come back to normal or normal was or is it permanent even the s word con conversions that have happened from a word to s word is that the of subscribers that came in only for this period 30 second views from each one of us would be great yeah uh start with probably tarun so SWOT is real. Unfortunately for the advertisers, SWOT is real. We're only seeing continuous growth on SWOT, uh, and that movement from SWOT a to SWOT is is going to continue. What really is also happening is three or four, from a publisher point of view, three or four things. Uh, one, scale is is real. Second is digital is the norm. Third is video is not video in the same sense. So we just launched like a short video app, which is 90 seconds. We do news, which is live and continuous. And we do AWOD and SWOT, which is long form. And you will have to do a lot of different kind of video as publisher, as well as as a marketer to be able to engage different kind of audiences at different. Sure. That may there may be a possibility it may just get over in the middle so yeah. apologies for that so i would like to thank all the panelists in advance if we get cut off <laughs> i have no control so that will be 30 seconds yeah a couple of and um, i am always going to stand in this one most see human behavior generally don't change over a short period of time but it has changed okay so definitely this is going to be a norm what we just need to wake up and is that as a industry wake up how we are going to address all of these changes how we make it part of our communication planning how do we make those measurements matter that's all 
that's all we need to sort for right now. Okay. Yeah. So, Shivani, we need to cut it off or we have a minute? <laughs> I think we should close. Okay, fair Bye. enough. So, and thank you. Thank bye. you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. This was awesome. Loved it. Thank you. And we should keep in touch. Thank yes. You. See yeah. you, folks. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. -bye. Okay, bye.